I'd like to take just a few minutes of your time to talk about the concept of clean elections, how this concept plays out in a post-Citizens United world, and finally examine the implications of enactment of the 2012 New York State Fair Elections Act. To understand how the clean elections model works, let's take a look at the problem it attempts to solve. Right now, candidates for state office must raise lots of money to run their campaigns. And for the most part, this money comes from special interests who have expectations. So when legislative decisions are made, elected officials must first consider how the decision will affect their funders, not what's best for constituents. Because the electoral process makes candidates dependent on their funders, the legislative process is tipped towards the money. The clean elections model breaks this dependency relationship between elected officials and funders by enabling qualified candidates to get public money to run campaigns. And because candidates get their money from voters, they are responsible only to voters, and decisions are made with an eye to constituents. I'm personally supportive of this model. I worked for its enactment. In 2008, I created this full-page newspaper ad to generate public awareness and support. But that was then. The political landscape has changed. New sources of campaign cash have been loosened by the Supreme Court. The decision in Citizens United versus the Federal Election Commission subverts the clean elections model in two distinct ways. First, and most obviously, direct contributions and independent expenditures can and will swamp publicly funded candidates in races important to special interests. Since 2010, outside groups have learned to work almost seamlessly with campaigns without direct coordination. Bottom line is private money will trump public money as needed. Taxpayer dollars will be wasted. The presidential races have already demonstrated this to be true. But there's an even worse scenario. Campaign financiers will smell the money and run their bought candidates with public funds. Taxpayers will foot the bill for all direct campaign expenses while special interest godfathers decimate the opponent with independently placed TV ads. Once again, tax dollars are wasted, but this time by actually subsidizing corporate candidates. Now these examples presume ideal, airtight, clean elections legislation, and that's a far cry from that proposed by the 2012 New York State Fair Elections Act. On top of the problems created by the Supreme Court, this legislation adds a twist of its own. The bill is a reasonable matching funds approach akin to the New York City system, but opens a back door wide enough to admit a speeding Brinks truck loaded with cash. The parties insisted that they should be able to help any candidate on the party ticket. This seems reasonable until the limits are considered. Two and a half million dollars for governor and lieutenant governor each. One million for controller. A hundred thousand for senate and fifty thousand for assembly. And where will the parties get all this cash? Well, from special interests, of course. So instead of the candidates getting the money directly, it gets funneled through the party leaders instead. Does anyone think that the likes of Sheldon Silver needs more money and more power? Well, that's exactly what this bill does, and in a big way. Taxpayers finance the candidate's campaign, but once elected, the people's rep is on the speaker's leash, and the speaker works for the money changers. This bill concentrates even more power in the hands of party bosses, exacerbating the very problem it aims to fix. It's time for citizens to read the legislation and just say no.